Hi, welcome back to Frazzle Dad's Minis. I'm Jim, Frazzle Dad. It has been a couple weeks. Um, I've been working hard for the past three or four months to try to improve my skill at painting skin tones, and it's been a really frustrating lot of hard work. I've been a bit ground down because I feel like I haven't made the sort of progress uh, that I wanted to, and I didn't have over overly high expectations. It's just been painting skin is hard. Um, and then out of nowhere, once in a six side on his discord server, um, posted a partnership that he had with dungeons and dreadnoughts. You can find them on my mini factory and I'll put a link down here. Um, for these amazing little stompy Walker, uh, 3d print models. And I got really excited. So I ran off and I had some ideas that popped into my head. I uh, wanted to do some diorama work on the bases. <coughs> I wanted to try a few new things. And it was really lovely because I'd been working on skin for so long. And then headed off and did armor for a couple weeks. And it's been a couple weeks because of a lot of self-inflicted drama around 3D printer. Um mistakes and other things but at the end of the day uh the grand reveal will show you something that i'm pretty happy with and i had a lot of fun along the way so here we go hope you enjoy the ride so here i'm getting ready to do a bit of underpainting with some white paint uh, i was using vallejo model color if I would have been thinking better, I would have used some white ink. I had some struggles here with the consistency, but what I'm trying to do aside from bonking the camera is get a little bit of um, bright color on top of the black primer so that when I start doing my, uh, when I start doing my camo painting, there'll be a bit of tonal variation. Uh, I've learned this trick from watching a bunch of really good folks like Night Shift, um, Moshi, a bunch of other YouTube folks that do armor. And uh, I thought this was something that would be interesting and I uh, thought I'd give it a try. So it's not a solid coat. Rather, I'm hitting little splotchy areas. Um, I'm trying to get some good solid color, but then also a bit of a transition. And so this just carries on and I just get, you know, some uh, areas painted around um, with some white. And again, probably should have used white ink, but uh, this worked out okay. Now at this point, I am starting to uh, get down one of the three colors that I'll be using this is um, AK's Dunkelgelb and I didn't want to do a whole entire base coat probably could have done that and then painted the others on top of it but I just started to hit uh, various areas with this um, working at trying to get it smooth also I'm trying to make sure that I'm extending it around corners and around edges uh, rather than just doing one surface plane, uh, good camouflage is meant to break up contours and things. So I'm trying to do that as well with this. Now it's moving on to the uh, brown and uh, struggled a bit. Turned out my airbrush was not really clean and I was having some clogging issues, but this was just a lot of patient work trying to get some bands of brown down. Um, again, trying to break up some contour and uh, just moving around the model to get different areas laid down with the brown. And the, the brown against this uh, dark yellow looks really, really cool, by the way. I was really happy with this color choice. So here I'm starting to block in the little, I don't know if they're windows or sensor panels or, you know, whatever, but I'm blocking them in with a little bit of Pro Acro blue, uh, sky blue, 
I'll come back and highlight that with some white to give it like some specular uh, reflections. Um, I didn't show the final airbrush session with green because everything was turning out uh, bad focus. Sorry about that. You may notice some mist coming in from the left. Uh, that's because the little humidifier is running to help my wet palette stay effective. So anyway, this is just careful work blocking in all of these. You can see that I'm hitting, uh, making a little bit of a mess, but I can clean all that up later. So I just carry on with this and get those colored in. And a bit of dry brushing. I'm using one of my 9 million Vallejo silvers. Don't know which one. Probably chrome, which I think is the brightest. Uh, just going over the black of the guns, make them stand out a bit. Here I'm using uh, Vallejo pigment powders, uh, one of the blacks and the rust. Uh, using them to try to get some grime on the gun barrels, but then also the engine uh, grating there on the back. Um, I like the rust on guns for heat distressing. Even if I don't get all of the color uh, coming through, I'll do some heat effects later. But it gives it a nice kind of gritty texture on there. So yeah, pigment powders. If you haven't played with them, I can't recommend them enough. Um, I'll use some pigment fixer fluid here a bit later, but uh, I won't bother showing that. Here I'm starting some heat effect uh, work on the gun barrels. I'm using Vallejo's, uh, they've got a metallic blue, I can't remember what it is, for the uh, very ends of the gun, the dangerous ends. Along the rest of the barrel, I started out trying Pro Curl's transparent yellow, orange, and red. I didn't really like that, so I went back to using other approaches for that. Uh, might show later, but um, I thought I'd just show this at least for a little bit. So here I'm using some pin wash, and pin wash is glorious magic. You take a dark black oil paint, and you mix it with a whole lot of white spirits, and you touch your brush to a seam line, and the surface tension magic from the white spirits will wick that pigment along the whole seam line. And it's just, it's wonderful. It's magic. It works great. Um, one thing is you should probably varnish, uh, spray your model first. Uh, that way it's a little easier to manipulate it and uh, clean up afterwards. Um, it turned out okay. I forgot to varnish uh, before I did this. It turned out all right, but uh, just a little recommendation there. Um, spray varnish, then play with your pin washes. Tamiya and some other folks have commercial pin wash, but really uh, oil, dark black uh, oil paint, mineral spirit or white spirits, whatever, glorious stuff. And it makes a huge difference in how your mini looks. And then here's a couple really good shots where you can see how this stuff just wicks out and really does an awesome job with highlighting those panel lines. Uh, again, pin washes, they're just uh, they're terrific. It's a lot of fun to play with, and it makes a big, big difference. The framing's terrible here, but what I wanted to show was how I'm using some uh, thin down white to give just a little hint of specular highlights, so reflection or whatnot, uh, just brighter lighting to give some detail on those little window panels. Here I'm using Dirty Down's Rust product, which is just glorious. Um, does an amazing job uh, making things look rusty. But one thing I have to emphasize is you have to stir it. Shaking is not enough. You need to get some little spatula scraper thing in around the bottom and stir it because sludge settles down and shaking is not enough. But this is a glorious product and it's a lot of fun to use and the, the results are just terrific. 
I'm sorry, hiding everything with my hand. Uh, but yeah, great product. Lots of fun. I wanted a little more separation visually on the guns, so I pulled out some Pro Acryl bronze, maybe copper, uh, and I'm using that to just uh, line out, mark out the bands that go around the guns. Um, it looks really nice. Uh, just uh, it's too much black. Uh, wanted something a little better there. So yeah, a little bit of careful picking out there. Nice results. Here I am starting to put together the second unit. Uh, this will be the missile launcher one. Uh, these ones, uh, some other folks on the once in a six side discord server, uh, they pinned these ball joints. The ball joints are really fussy. Um, I had things fall apart a several time, fall apart several times. Um, I'm using black, uh, CA glue and activator. Um, probably also making sure that there's a really rough surface for everything to adhere to well. Uh, but you know, uh, that's just figuring out the assembly process. Uh, the models from Dungeons and Dreadnoughts are just their killer. Uh, they went together really well. You can, you know, they're articulated. You can do a lot with the poses. Um, yeah, so it's just basic assembly and figuring it out. Uh, pinning might be an advantage for these particular models. But yeah, yeah. Uh, Sanding and gluing and gluing and more gluing. It was all good. So here I am working on the little soldier uh, that's dismembered and stomped and uh, underneath the launcher. Um, I just got together. I had some soldiers laying around. Sorry about the head here. Um, dismembered, broke them apart, made a new cloak with some green stuff uh, to better simulate... Um, you know, uh, the cloak laying on top of a corpse, getting some rough colors in here. I'll wash these with a dark wash later, but this was at least uh, the start of some color on that. So now this gets fun, playing around with uh, bits and pieces of some ruined walls and columns that I got somewhere, I don't remember where but just doing some layout to see kind of what works, what's interesting. Um, I've got some Vallejo ground texture, which I love as a starting point. Um, but now it's just, you know, hey, what looks good, what, what's interesting, and start playing around with stuff. So here I've got everything glued down to the bases uh, for both pieces, and now I'm just starting to get some gray paint on the ruined concrete pillars i'll come back and hit this with an with a dark black oil wash to make it look grimier and uh, you know make some of the texture stand out but um yeah everything is on the base and i'm feeling pretty good about things now because this is you know i'm seeing structure and that's always cool um all of the iron that's sticking out right the rebar i'll hit that with some silver and then come back with that dirty down rust to really make that stuff pop out and look skanky and nasty. But uh, this is, things are progressing quite along. Things are progressing quite nicely. Here I'm working on the base with the body. Um, I got a quick little bit of dirty NMM on the blade trying to pick out some color and some detail with grays on the rest of the figure actually come back later and cover that up mostly with a dark blue um, but you'll notice there's the body there there's a backpack and then also I had a spare launcher cartridge uh, that I hacked up with uh, my Dremel and then also took a bit of wire uh, and drilled a hole into the ball joint to make it look like a piece of cable had been ripped out there. Um, so that was a lot of fun. So this is really just trying to get uh, some bits and pieces of coloring and, and texture on here. Um, a bit later I'll put a red stripe across that launcher, launcher uh, weapon. Um, but yep, just working along. So 
So we've jumped up in time quite a bit. You'll notice a couple things. First off, uh, the light is quite different. I got a new LED uh, light and I'm still figuring out exposure. So this is a bit washed out, but uh, yeah, bear with me. I'll get it sussed out. So you can tell I've got the bases painted. I've put an oil wash on them and uh, I've got the figures mounted. Um, in this case, just one leg. Uh, so that I could get in there and access some stuff uh, that's pinned and glued in. But now I am starting to work with both flocking and then also some static grass. I bought this static grass contraption months ago. This was the first time I'd pulled it out of a box. Um, zapped myself pretty good a couple times, uh, got to figure a few things out. It's kind of messy, but uh, it was fun to experiment around with. So yeah, that was cool. This is pretty much the final touches here. Um, I've got a bin of stuff I grabbed from the field, uh, various size rocks and organic matter. Uh, don't know why there's a toothpick in there, but just strewing a few more things around to uh, make the base look interesting and uh, this is pretty close to being done and that folks is about that there were a few other odds and ends um, i didn't get good uh, video of one effect that will be obvious when i get to the pictures and the reveal but uh, i am really tickled with how these folks turned out um, I don't have a turntable, so it's just all static pictures for the grand real time. But yeah, without further ado, here's some photos of the walkers. Big shout out to Once in a Six Side. If you are at all into any kind of 3D printing, you need to join his Discord. Uh, there's a great community there, all kinds of troubleshooting and help for beginners all the way up to very advanced stuff. And I really appreciate that um, he managed to work out this partnership with Dungeons and Dreadnoughts for these models. These have been a huge amount of fun for me. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe so you can catch new pieces when they come out. I'd appreciate it if you gave me a thumbs up if you liked this and let me know in the uh, comments what you thought of things. Until next time, remember, be kind, <clears throat> experiment, learn. At the end of the day, it's just paint and plastic. Thanks for watching.